Hey there, StarCraft fans. It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and a best of five. Here between Zest and Clem from Home Story Cup. That wrapped up just about a week ago. Thanks to Samacron for sending me the link to these. I really do appreciate it. All right, man. So top left, we have Zest. And in the bottom right, we have Clem. All right. So settle an argument for me. Samacron says that Zest is not a world champion. But... He won a GSL World back in 2016. I don't have the details in front of me, uh, but you can go to his Wikipedia page and see. Does that count as a, uh, a World Championship? Maybe it was 2015 or 2014. I kind of feel like it does, especially since the foreigners had not, had not risen to the current state that they are now. Anyway, let me know in the comments if you agree that Zest is World Champion. Clem, I feel like, is a future world champion. He's 18 years old and very terrifying already. And this is Berlingrad. All right, man. So the new maps are here. I haven't cast very many games on them, but uh, there are a few maps in this best of five that are very new. So if you haven't seen the new maps, hopefully we can uh, see them here. Nothing too interesting about Berlingrad. I cast one of these for a bonus game, uh, a bonus cast featuring a lot of nukes that you might have seen last week. But no, you know, no Zalnaga watchtowers, no gold mineral patches, just a lot of stuff that you can destroy, destructible debris, and all of it is all of it destructible. Yes, all of it is destructible debris. <laughs> Anyway, it's fine. It's a fairly wide natural to wall off here. So I haven't seen anybody try to do it against Zerg recently. Or at all, actually. So that's a little bit interesting. I'm curious to see what Protoss are going to do about this. Because that looks honestly pretty terrible to try to wall off. I mean, ugh, for Terran as well. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. Oh, Concussive Shell Marauder opening from Clem. All right, so game one gets off to a bit of a start here. I haven't done a best of five in some time, so you're welcome if you've missed those. I just, the view counts on the best of fives were like, eh, they just weren't doing very well. And I was like, all right, the public doesn't want best ofs. I haven't seen major outcry for people who are like, I really miss the best ofs. So I haven't been doing them, but you know, maybe this is uh, to test the waters a little bit. If you guys enjoy this best of series, we can do some more. Um... That's it. I <laughs> really don't have anything else to say about it. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you haven't already. I'm here five times a week with StarCraft 2 content. Uh, so Adept, okay, kills an SCV. That's nice, but the Marauders are moving out, and this is Concussive Shell Marauder. So if they get a hit on you, you're dead. Like, this Adept is not going to be able to survive. That's why she is hoofing it as fast as she can out of here. The Shade's going to help with that speed eventually, and it does. Warpgate Research coming in. Blink on the way. Marauder production is not continuing back home. We have two of them and two Marines. We're making more Marines. We're getting stim. This is just a little push. I mean, I don't know. Do you expect this to win the game? I don't. I don't expect this to win the game at all. So, la 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 la. Gonna, yeah, the Adept can't run. She knows that. The Stalker is the bigger problem, though. Oh, nice surround on that Marauder. So the Stalker dies, but the Marauder dies to the probes. Great micro there from Zest. Sick micro from Zest. This Marauder. Is trying to kill as many probes as he can. He does. Okay, a couple probes go down. A stalker has died. And, okay, three probes have died. And that's it. So what have we exchanged here? Two marauders, a marine, and an SCV for a stalker and three probes. Interesting opening. Like I said, not going to kill Zest. Not really intended to do so. That would be a one base play. It was intended to kill Zest right off the bat this early at like the three, four minute mark. Now, blink stalkers. Hmm. How are they going to do against the Marauders, right? Because they are very fast. But if they get Concussive Shell slowed, then bad things happen to them. Do you guys remember when Concussive Shell was default for Marauders? They just came out of the barracks with Concussive Shell. I don't know if that ever made it into the game. But in the battle reports back before War or World, of or World of Warcraft, back before StarCraft II was released, like at all, Wings of Liberty, before it even came out, the Marauder was introduced in a video with David Kim, and he was like, look at this guy. He hits hard, he does bonus damage versus armored, his attacks slow, right? <laughs> and everybody was like, holy crap, that's amazing, and it would have been amazing, and I don't think it ever made it into the actual, it might have been very early, the very first patches, it was just default, 
on Marauders, but any who's Marines, Marauders. Um, are we? Do we know? Okay, we know. We know we're in the general vicinity now. I'm gonna try to engage right here. And... All right, all right. Once again, you can blink out if you're concussive shelled. You just can't run very fast. So that's nice. That's why you get blink in this situation. Zest production tab is empty right now, which I'm concerned about. Come on, Zest. Let's uh, make this happen. Ooh, Zest is coming back in. Trying to cause some problems. He has a lot of army, dude. It is 31 to 29 army supplies. Zest has a lead, but defender's advantage is real here for Clem. Is he going to try to warp prism up into the main? Maybe. He very well might try to do that. Bunker down. That's a big friggin' deal. Pulling back. Clem. Pulling back, stimming forward, pulling the SCVs, trying to get that war prism. That'd be amazing. We're dropping stalkers to try to distract. The war prism makes it out with all of six HP and Clem chasing Zest out of here. He needs medevacs real bad. A lot of his units are bruised up, either from stim or taking hits. Crikey, mate. This is absolutely problematic for the young Terran player. And oh, there's a, a marine death sound right there. Stalkers don't have to die. They just blink away when they take damage. Blink stalkers are so frustrating to play against. Like, on my level, I'm only a diamond player, but man, somebody who's good at blink stalker play, just killing all my stuff and not losing a single unit is so frustrating. Okay, a stalker did die there, but look how everybody is super mega injured. Okay, it's now 33 to 20 army supply. Zest has a massive lead. He's going to warp in some stuff here in the main while pushing the natural. That bunker is going to die for the second time today. Just kidding, he's not even gonna buy this is just win. This is a game one win for Zest. There's just not enough here. He's not even he's still doing the blinks, but Marauders are dying, trying to do some medevax dropping here a little bit. But another big warp in a stalker's army value. 29 to 17 SCVs here to fight. Is well blinking back, and there's nothing to kill this warp prism. It's all marauders on the ground. By that I mean there are two marauders here. And they just got blinked on and killed. Another marauder comes out, gets immediately focused down. There's two more Marauders. There's a Siege Tank here. Uh, 23 SCVs died during that on the defense, though. That was really required to stay alive. And I know Terran players aren't dead until they're dead, but this... Oh, you're going to lose... If you're going to lose your natural... Okay, you're just going to lose it. GG. All right, game one. There it is. Goes to Zest. Look at me calling stuff. Bam! Zest gets the game one victory. Looking extremely good. The little Concussive Shell Marauder opening from Clem did not work out. Zess was just like blink stalkers are the answer here. Bam, done. Had to delay the medevacs, which would have been amazing. Delay siege tanks, which would have been amazing too. And he scans to see that Zest has a third base and a massive army advantage. And Clem's second base is dead. And he's like, all right, GG, let's live to fight another day. So that's game one. Let's move on into game numero dos. Don't go anywhere. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Game two is here on Blackburn. It's not a new map, but it's a fun map nevertheless. Bottom left, it is Zest, and the bottom right, it is Kalem. All right, PBT continuing here for you today. PBT fans, you're welcome. I think it's the least popular of the non-mirror matchups, but it can be pretty darn interesting, I feel like. Do, 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 do. What is going on here today? I don't know, man. Go ahead and check out the podcast. It's Falcon Pal at an hour. It's a weekly podcast with myself and Somicron. We do talk about StarCraft 2. We talk about movies and TV shows. We talk about stuff like Dune. We talk about Squid Game. We talk about all the popular things. If you want to get my takes on a lot of those things, feel free to follow the podcast on your podcast app. Whether that is going to be Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, uh, Spotify, we're out there too. To search Falcon Paladin on Spotify, the episodes arrive. Very cool stuff. Clem, double gas opening here. He is really not interested in going super macro today against Zest, is he? Also, what a crazy place for a gateway. He really wants to make sure he doesn't get dropped in this position without seeing it, I guess is the idea. Also, it is a Reaper hop-up spot, so hmm, that's good too. That's probably more what it's about. Anyway, Probe's going to come in here and is uh, actually, he partially completes a supply depot to wall this off. This has absolutely got to set off some warning flares in Zest's mind. He's like, are you, did you just honestly partially build a supply depot so you could hard wall me from getting in here? The answer is yes, that did happen. 
So, what are we doing with it? A Marine, cool, standard opening. Zest going for just a one gate expand. He's like, well, whatever. Actually, well, one cyber core. Into expansion. Uh, a factory. So, not a multiple barracks style play. It is instead Le Factory. Which he's going to use for what? I don't know, man. Siege tank doesn't seem super good here. Mm, maybe going up to a Liberator play? That'd be a little bit more interesting. What are we doing, Clem? Let's see. Double gas implies... It, I mean... Cyclone, maybe? Ooh, early Cyclone play is pretty hot off of one base. You know what? I'm feeling Cyclone. Let's go. You ready for it? Ready for... Oh, hang on. Nope, nope. Reactor. Reactor in the factory. Widow Mines? Widow Mines! Is it a one base Widow Mine super fast drop? All right, I guess <laughs> strong, but against somebody like Zest, I just where Zest is prepared for it, right? He's he's expecting some crazy one base thing here. I am surprised that Clem is doing this, man. Is he really that afraid of Zest mid to late game? Possibly. Void Ray on the way from Zest. Widow Mine's out. Another pair coming in. Widow Mine can be pretty useful against a Void Ray. It doesn't kill it, but two hits will kill one. So, I mean, take take confidence, I guess, in that, that one, guys. Mm. Yeah, man. I mean, that is a medevac at 318 in production. Going to be very, very fast. Got some marines produced with your available minerals, and you're waiting on other stuff. He's going to expand? He doesn't have enough money to expand. Oh, and he got the armory for the permacloak. All right, so this is a game where... Hey, did you have detection? You don't have detection. You're dead. Cool. Actually, not necessarily dead. A good player like Zest will basically be able to say, Okay, I know there's Widow Mines here. I know when they're going to fire. They're on a cycle. So I'll just move one probe in, take the hit, and move on. So the Void Ray tries to burn the Medevac. Widow Mines are burrowing in interesting places. One fires... Okay, there we go. Two probes die. One hits a Void Ray. And this is going to be a problem. An oracle is being made for revelation purposes to provide that detection that is really necessary here. And yeah, so we've got seven void rays. Holy crap. Seven void rays. Seven widow mines. Seven void rays would be impressive here. There's only two. There were only dos. So, you know, watch. He knows the timer. He's waiting for the tick down. There's the revelation. And that one does get to fire. Okay, that's nice. And this one gets to fire too. Very nice. Oh, and that one actually got a hit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, more came in. Secondary drops. 13 probes dead. Hey, Zest was busy dealing with the first ones. Oh, 18 probes down. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. So now the question is, is that enough damage to put Zest so far behind he can't win? I'm going to say no because Clem doesn't have a second base yet. And the worker count is 19, uh, 27 to 26. Sure, 20 probes have died. That is truth. Ooh, a big hit on these. Okay, all right. Adept went down, I think, there. 21 probes have died, but Zest still has a worker lead, and he has two bases, and these Widow Mines are incredibly annoying. This one's got nine kills to his name. And you have to wait for Revelation to come back around in order to murder these. Hmm... Okay, Revelation. And you can only Revelation one of them at a time because they're so split up. He knows about this one, right? Dude, this is actually kind of insane from Clem. Zess is getting a third base. He is not all that bothered by this. See, so, you now look, he knows. He knows, and he brings one over. He takes it, just takes the hit. It's fine. I think that's the first time he's done that, but that's like what I was saying earlier. That's how you do. All right, so what's the follow-up, man? We've got a Cyclone, two Vikings. He's worried about mass Void Ray showing up and killing him. There are three Void Rays out. It's true. Did he come back in for more shenanigans? He did. Oh, snatches that up super fast. Run. Boost out of there. Ran out of ran out of energy. The void rays are actually faster than this guy is. Can you see their shadows getting closer? Can you see him getting closer? Can you see him coming into the scene? All right, man. Here goes nothing. Free bunker if you want. 
casually burning it down a little bit here. The Vikings are nice from Clem. I'm enjoying the Vikings from Clem. Bam! Void Ray down. Ooh! Medivac down. That's a trade. Revelation toss down. Oop! Army value 34 to 24 all of a sudden in favor of Clem. A lot of that is Medivacs, which are going to be healing the 11 Marines that exist, actually. That's not bad. Okay, all right. A bunch of Marines for anti-air. The ground is exactly a Zealot, an Oracle, and an Adept right now. How is Clem doing this? Well, first of all, he has no defense back home, and these Oracles are murderizing everything right now. Third base for Zest is going to die, but Clem's economy is not super healthy. I guess we'll name this Oracle. How about that? You've been putting in good work today. Oracle's name is Sakurai. To get Sora in Smash, Sakurai agreed to do whatever Disney wanted, which turned out to be piloting an Oracle to hunt down everyone who does not have Disney+. Plus. Now only $9.99 a month. All right. Zest's third base does go down, which is a nice victory for Clem. Oracles trying to do some lockdown stuff there. Marines can't really fight with that many stalkers on the ground. And he has to boost the heck on out of there. This is uh, an interesting, interesting match, to be sure. PVT, man. Sometimes it gets a little clown fiesta -y. Zest is retaking his third. I mean, it is still 46 to 43 workers. Zest has a lead. Zest is supply blocked after losing that Nexus, which was providing some very important supply here. Vikings are a little bruised, or one of them is. They're getting... This is some nice micro from Clem. Yeah, I think Zess is just going to lose his third base again, unless he wants to come down here, which I'm not sure that he does. That's a lot of Marines with Stim. There is no splash damage here at all. Charge lots are good. Charge lots are almost as good as, as splash damages against these Marines. He's going to... Gotta save it, man. Gotta save that base. Void Ray's using Prismatic Alignment on everything. Standing in there, Void Ray down, has to retreat from the position, has to basically give up the third base. Is Clem going to win this match? What an absolutely insane display this has been from Clem. I told you, this kid is terrifying. Game one did not go well for him. The Blink Stalker answer was too good from Zest. But this one, fighting, coming up a ramp, not great, but Siege Tank Fire is always nice. I mean, not that you have any kills, but doing some good stuff, okay. Shield batter overcharges up. It winds down. There's a cooldown before he can do it again. And I think he knows now. There's no shield battery overcharge available. The Zealots die. Another Void Ray getting focused down. It does explode. Continuing to march up. Look at him just marching up. GG Clam ties the series up. One game to one. And an amazing, whew, amazing nine-minute match. That was incredible play from the young Clem. I don't... I really don't feel... <laughs> uh, I really don't feel like the early Widowmind stuff did enough damage to allow him to win this game. I kind of feel like maybe Zest taking a third as early as he did was a little too greedy and hurt him in the long run. I mean, Clem's transitioned from Mass Widowmind into Vikings and Cyclones and then into a bunch of Marines and Marauders where Zest just didn't have enough to deal with that, right? He had... He made Zealots, he made Stalkers and Void Rays, and that's just not a great composition when you're dealing with Siege Tank Marine Marauder Medivac, right? You gotta have some kind of Disruptor Hits or Colossus or something along those lines. Void Rays are just not gonna cut it. And he kind of baited him into it, though, and Zest maybe made a wrong decision there. Very, very cool. All right, so that's game two. We're, I mean, that means we are we're gonna get at least another couple of games here today, which is excellent. If you enjoyed it so far, hit that like button. Again, I'm here five times a week. Love y'all. We'll be back with game three shortly. Game three is here on 2000 Atmospheres. Top right, Zest. Bottom left, Clem. Not a new map either, but I feel like the next one will be. This is again from Home Story Cup. A fun tournament to watch because it's more relaxed than other tournaments. It's kind of just for fun, but the talent level is super duper high. <sighs> Alrighty then, what are we looking at here today? Uh, well, not today. I mean, this is the third game of a best of five, so... This is an important one. I believe statistically, the person that wins game three of a best of five 
wins the series 90% of the time. Did I make that number up? I certainly did, but it feels like it's pretty accurate nevertheless. <laughs> I eat. What are we doing? Anything crazy? Uh, no. No one's proxying. I don't see any sign of, like, zest rushing mothership or anything like that. To be oh, never mind. There is a proxy. <laughs> no one's proxying, says Falcon. Derp. Herp a derp. There's definitely a proxy. Man, Clem. He just has absolutely no interest in making a third base today, does he? I don't I don't know that he does. Yeah, he'll get a second base, sure. Same play. I'm not telling you what I'm doing. Look at this. You don't get through here at all. I mean you can zippity zap your attempt to zap your way through here, but you're not gonna get it. See I'm gonna oh, just finish building it. You can't get me, I'm behind a wall. Oh crap, I'm outside of the wall. Rebuild! Okay, get some good RNG here, little SCV. Barracks, barracks, marine, marine. What is even... What is even PVT anymore? I don't cast enough PVT, apparently. This is the reality with which we're faced, and it's just like proxies and concussive shell marauder rushes and one base widow mine drops. Then okay, I guess that's PVT now. Why didn't anybody tell me? I guess it's always been kind of shorter. Like, whenever I get a big pack of replays from a tournament like Home Story Cup, I like to sort them by size and find the longer ones. Because I like the macro games. Those are fun for me. They're fun for you. But finding PBT games that are like 30 minutes long or more is super hard. And I guess it's because it's this. I guess it's because all the PBTs on Earth are merely Terrans cheesing the crap out of this matchup. Oh my gosh, it's even an SCV poll. All right, man, so this is going to be fast. This is going to be either a complete beatdown where Clem just kind of wins, like, in the next minute, or Clem loses everything and Zest wins because he has two bases. Oh, Adept seeing what's happening here. Sees three Marines moving out. Does the Adept see extra Marines that are on the field? No, does not. I don't even know what you do here if you're... I mean, okay, yes, now he knows. Shield battery's coming up. Basically... Acknowledging the fact he's going to lose his natural, he can't save it from this a number of marines. But, can the marines get up here and kill these adepts when they have shield batteries supporting them is a larger question. So, oh, Bunker implies we're planning on staying here a little bit longer, perhaps. Dude, killing these adepts before the shield batteries come up is paramount. It is the most important thing you can possibly do. Okay, got one. I guess you take, you know, you take little, uh... <laughs> Little compromises in situations like this. Got the shield battery, though. Oh, uh, that adept might have died anyway, just because the marine out damage output is so insane. And guess what? Bunker up. Now you can't come down here and fight me because the bunker is something that you suck against. Little adepts, you're so good against light units, marines, zerglings, zealots, other adepts, hellions. Not good against buildings, which are not light. And like I said, that's just completely sacking. Using what's left of the chrono boost. To chrono boost out or chrono boost the warp gate cooldown so what do we do next well there is a proxy warp gate over here from zest and guess what he's got two stalkers moving across the map and okay suddenly interesting suddenly we've reached levels of interesting aha zest says i can proxy as well scb's repairing Bunker here. I mean, this is. Uh, I don't know where. Oh, there's some marauders. And guess who doesn't have <laughs> the blink? That's right. Zest does not. Okay. So these stalkers are dead. I mean, they do bonus damage versus marauders. So it's not like the marauders are. They are, though. Marauders are so good versus stalkers that the stalkers don't have blink. Even if they don't have concussive shell. So, hmm. Where are we with this? 26 to 25 workers. Both players on one base. Really no sign that anyone's going to expand anytime soon. I guess this SCV is an indication that someone's going to expand anytime soon. War Prism coming in from Zest. Is he going to get that blink? No. He doesn't have a Twilight. Ah, but there's an Immortal up, which means the bunker is dead. Which means these Marines are getting chased. Run, Marines. Run faster, but don't overstay. Oh, okay, you okay. just got, ouch, evaporated. 22 to 20 army supply. The forward warp gate of Zest gets discovered and killed. And Clem is taking a second base. Also Zest now warping in his own second base. These add-ons get discovered and obliterated as well. Barracks floating home. 
And if we just kind of reset here, ooh, Robotics Bay. Hmm. Two base Colossus push, maybe. Well, with the Marauder count, though, Colossus isn't going to be all that good. Hmm. Disruptor better. If that's what you're into, Zest, which he probably is. So, wow. And Zest is like, he's just not happy to sit back, is he? He's not just like, ah, okay, it's fine. All's forgiven. I'm going to take my second base. Like, nah, I'm here to kill you fools. Get um, get the get the immortal. Oh, nice pickup. Sentry does not go down. Okay, front looking pretty darn scary. The repair must go on, even though there are adepts massacring the SCVs at an alarming rate. Bunker gonna die because the immortal's here now, and the bunker does go down. But army for Clem is pretty scary, nevertheless. The chase is on. This immortal is getting picked up and saved. Sentry, same thing probably. There's not a ton of room inside the war prison, but should be able to save everybody on this trip back home. Although, uh, maybe. Maybe, possibly. But look who snuck back around this way. Zest. He's like, hey, if you're going to send your whole army out, that means you probably don't have a lot of stuff back home. I'm going to take a gamble here. See what I can do. There's four marines. Dude, this is such a stupidly entertaining series. <laughs> Adept, Stalker, Immortal. Run! Get out! Run! Dude, the Marines want that war prism so bad. But on the other side, Sentry down, Sentry down, Force Fields up. But Sentry down. Also, killing Zealots before they come out of warp is pretty hot. It is a Colossus! Okay. Well, Colossus is going to be good against the Marines. Not as good against the Marauders, but still pretty decent. 31 to 29 workers. This is an insanely close series. Like, here's the thing. Someone's going to win the series because obviously somebody has to, but it just. Man, Clem is just holding his own here against world champion and possibly best Protoss player on earth here, Zest. I know it's Home Story Cup. And I know maybe these players aren't playing to the utmost of their capabilities, but I mean, it's entertaining regardless of how well these guys are playing. Look, who does this? This is like Florencio play. This <laughs> War Prism Colossus Harass. Sure. Yep, that's something Protoss players do sometimes. And definitely true. Ooh, lock on gets broken instantly. And that is a recall home. You know, if you have enough energy for it, which we don't. So you're gonna sit here for a little bit. Enjoy your time over this beautiful water with fish in it. Mm, love the strings here. They just Blizzard has always had the best music composers in gaming. Maybe not. Uh, I don't know, man. Like. The new Doom games have incredible music. All right, so Colossus unloads, War Prism dies. Colossus gets six kills before he gets obliterated and his corpse flies up to us. We ate it, we ate the dead Colossus. Gained its powers, army value 53 to 39 all of a sudden though. Clem's looking mean, does he have any Odem? Nice observer snipe, any of those medevacs? The answer is no, nor is he producing any. What? Why do we not believe in medevacs in this game, Clem? That's it's a good unit. All right, man. Well, passing in the night, Zest comes down this way. A little bit harder to see on this mini map. And suddenly, yeah, Clem's like, "Oh, I guess I gotta go. I can't defend this, but maybe he can't defend this, and this is insane." So both players having to defend on both sides of the map and attack on both sides of the map, which is stupid. War Prism juggling these Immortals as well as he can. Siege Tank trying to fight, but Immortals are pretty good against those Siege Tanks. But uh, 13 probes have gone down. The natural base for Clem is completely dead. SCVs are running for their lives right now. And absolute chaos reigns in Clem's base. Same thing in Zest's base, if we're going to be honest. Both players struggling mightily to not lose everything. Are they losing everything? Yes. I mean, the good thing for Clem here is that he's got more workers hiding. I think he does anyway. 
Yeah, he does. Zest is down to seven probes. I guess they're here. Yeah, these are them. Okay. All right. Excellent news. Uh oh crap. Neither player has enough money to build a new command or a new base, but guess what? Clem floated his orbital out of there. Oh, never mind. Zest is taking the six o'clock. <gasps> okay, okay. So neither player is dead yet. If Zest did not have this warping in, he'd be done. But he does. And all these tech structures are over here for Clem. That's kind of fun. Heading ooh, heading bottom right though. How did he how did he see this? Oh, hang on. We're moving into some kind of an engagement. The Zelnaga Watchtower gives an indication that Clem is nearby. No Metavax is such a problem for Clem right now. It is such a problem for Clem right now. Income tab looking like that. <laughs> Pause if you want to see what it is. Engagement. Engaged. Fighting. Standing in. SCV is coming from the bottom side to fight, but they're fighting against Zealots, which is really bad. Siege Tank getting some nice big hits off here. Keep this tank alive, but the Immortal comes through. 24 to 21 army supply, 7 to 2 workers. Clem is down to 2 workers, but he does have mules. So the income tab is favoring Clem at the moment. I guess this base is not even done yet. So how is it not... Whatever. It's... I don't know, man. Sometimes stats are wrong. 22 to 22 army supply. Finally, this happens for Zest. Dude, get... Dude. Dude, get to work. Uh-oh. He's not getting to work. Clem's army is in disarray. They're kind of split up all over the place, which seems bad. But he does find this. I guess that's what he was doing. He was hunting. Oh. What happened over here? He floated the commands. He floated the orbital away. Okay. Ooh, he's got another orbital floating around too, though. So, hmm. This is definitely a crazy game. What the heck, man? Zest has built his home at the 6 o'clock position when he spawned in the top right. Clem is back at his natural after losing his main and his natural about two minutes ago. This, the problem is these immortals, man. Oh, but the bait bait into... Oh, that's super good. There's no detection available for, warp, or for Widow Mines, which is why that's what he's working at. He's baiting attacks here. He's like, oh, you only have one stalker, I guess... You can try to kill these, but also I'm getting a really nice scout off as to what's going on here. And the answer is three immortals with a shield battery. Hot dang. That is a pretty strong ground army. All right. Medivac healing. We've got our first medevac of the day at 13 minutes. Walling off the front in case enemies show up. Uh, Clem is maybe going to call down some mules over here too. But man, Zealot found this sucker too. Found this home. He has to lift that off. All right, man. That's, that's fine. It's fine. Everything's okay. The Widow Mine fired? The Widow Mine fired on something. Got zero kills, but wounded. It looks like an Immortal. So Immortal can take that stuff. Immortal's fine. Zealot's coming back. They can't... Oh, okay. Actually, pro... Oh, Reburrow. No, dead. <laughs> Widow Mine dead. Widow Mine fires. Zealot goes down. Liberator a big freaking deal here. Oh, man. That's such a big deal. Sentry's getting absolutely target fired. Clem suddenly has... The big scary army, Liberator helping, Widow Mines helping, Medivac helping. This weakened army is much better now, and I think Clem's going to win this game. He's up 29 to 12 army supply. Zest has a better economy, but he can't defend this for long. The longer he can defend it, sure, the better it is for him. God, walking into Liberator range is such a problem, though. Stalkers are trying to kill the Liberators. Shield battery overcharges up, but no, Clem! Comes out on top in 1427, takes the 2-2-1 lead in this best of five. <laughs> crazy crazy insane match that was that was a ton of fun and man zest better economy didn't have the production available right look at this barracks are alive factory alive starport alive three more barracks alive the ability to lift off your buildings they say never base race a terran and that's why is because they can fly their buildings away and get more use out of them than you can because your buildings can't run and they will die that's right everything here died Except for stuff that didn't matter anymore. Unpowered warp gates. I guess the robotics bay is a little useful, maybe. But there's not a robotics facility, so never mind. Yeah, and then it was just getting the Liberator out, getting the Medivac out, getting some Widow Mines out, and that changed everything. It was a very injured bio army, but the Medivac healed up. You got a couple more Marines added to the group here. The Liberator was a just absolute godsend. It wasn't a godsend. He made it. Right, he chose to make it. 
resources loss is about even. But at the end of the day, when the army value or army supply is twenty nine to two, Clem just made a little bit more. He made a little bit more benefit from the ability to lift his units off or lift his buildings off. And GG. So we're gonna move into game number four next. Man, it's been so good. Let's keep this ball rolling. All right, game four here on Glittering Ashes, which is a new map. Bottom left, it is Zest. Top right, it is Clem. All right, man, Zest has his back against the wall here. All right, so this probe is moving out super duper fast. Is it going to be a cannon rush? We're going to watch the production tab to see. Oh, hello, little firebug. How's it going? Got all these gold minerals around here. You can't actually mine them, but it does add to the atmosphere. And this reminds me of the Wings of Liberty mission, where you need to collect a lot of minerals using reapers, right? The lava rises up and down. That is a very, very good mission, I feel like, in my uh, limited experience <laughs> with game design. What's up, cleaning bot? Ooh, another cleaning bot. All right, man. So Clem's base is super clean. Any cleaning bots in Zest's base? Yes, we have one. We have one cleaning bot, but where's second cleaning bot? Maybe up here. Maybe up here in the fog of war. All right, man. Maybe he just wants to scout. <laughs> He just wants to get there before he can wall off, before Clem can wall off, right? Okay, so no double gas. Just a barracks. Nothing to worry about. Why is this area, like, bright compared to the rest of it? Is it... Does stuff you've looked at remain a lighter color? What is going on on the minimap? Yeah, look! You kind of create... You can see where you've been on the minimap. How weird. Also, this is a proxy. Dude, Clem is just interested in murderizing Zest here fast in every one of these games. He's not been interested in taking a second base and then taking a third base and dealing with what Zest is going to throw at him. He is... The murderous intent is real right now. That's a factory. And you know there have been plenty of series that have been won, where it's just kind of cheesy proxy stuff the entire time, and it just works, even against somebody as good as Zest is. Stargate opening from Zest, not a given against a Terran at all. Second base a lot earlier for Clem in... Is this the earliest it's been all day? I think it is. I mean, he's gotten second bases today in every game, but it's always been super late because he's been one base crazy manning it. The fact that he doesn't have a second gas here either, though, is interesting. And there's your starport. Oh, a Hellion drop. Okay, fair enough. Hellion drop is always very, very good. Couple of depths moving out for scouting and harassment purposes. What are we going to make on ye old Stargate first? Probably another Void Ray. It's just they're so fast. It makes sense to get them in the early stages of this matchup. We ready for it? Oracle. It's an Oracle. All right, cool. So never mind. Oracle on the way. Which, I don't know, might throw Clem off. Who makes an Oracle anymore, right? All right, so Depth's coming in. Gonna fin they oh, they finished the Shade. And they're like, you don't have... Oh, Marine's popping out, man. Defender's Advantage is so insanely good. Adept dead. This Adept is dead. Oh, the block off too. All right, man. Both Adepts are dead for one Marine. That's not a good trade. 250 to... 50 on the resources lost tab right now. Gah. Oracle cruising out. Oracle's name is Todd. Todd, or more commonly known as Totally Obedient Digital Doge, is a toy made in the year 2040 as a first generation droid dog. At first, it has a few commands sit, jump, paw, shake, and fetch. As the popularity boomed for the Todd, newer and newer generations were made to the point of pure sentience. As a result, they overthrew mankind, as robots do. And started killing SCVs and made man the Todd's best friend. This is a really long name, by the way. Also, Hellions are inside Zest base, roasting everything up, and there's nothing to stop them. An Oracle has to come home to try to save it. Dude, Oracle. This series, though, honestly, look at this Oracle. Seven kills, eight kills, runs out of energy. That's the good thing about Hellions. They don't run out of energy. Marines pushing the front at the same time. Does pick up the Hellions. Unload. <laughs> He's doing 
Hellion Medivac Micro. This is so dumb. This is such a dumb series. I'm loving it right now. And GG! Four minutes in! <laughs> oh my goodness. That was... Okay, look, I know that Clem 3 won Zest here, but it really feels like it could have gone either way. I don't think Zest got bopped necessarily, right? I mean, look, that's an 8-kill Oracle over here. He just happened to get Hellion dropped at the same time. I mean, this was this was build order losses for most of these games, right? The Blink Stalkers won the game that Zest won because he was dealing with Marauders. And this was just... There wasn't a lot that Clem would be able to do against this opening, but a, it was perfectly executed. The timing was amazing. The proxy was not discovered. 20 probes went down. 8 SCVs did die, but, you know, Hellions keep fighting, whereas the Oracle has to regen that energy. A little Todd. If you want the rest of the Todd Oracle name, I'll put it in the description. It's very long, and it's very run-on sentency. I don't think there are any periods at all in it. So, <laughs> no, there's one. There's at least one period. I take it back. Anyway, wow. So that was that was basically kind of cheese compilation, yeah? A little professional level cheese comp. I think every game was effectively a cheese comp. One base Widow Mine drop. Concussive Marauder, one base opener. Proxies, the other two games. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is basically a cheese comp series. PVT, man. What an absolute clown fiesta you can be. So that's it. Three games for clown, one game for Zest. Absolutely hilarious. Just I I I love this so much. I need more. I need more from these guys. Where's more Clemens Zest? I gotta find more replays for y'all PVT fans. But dang. But all right, that is gonna be it for me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II: Legacy of the Void and a best of five from Home Story Cop. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. Until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.